there's always going to be a lag. You know, look, we we in the White House celebrated when uh, wages started rising higher than inflation and, and real wages turned positive. But if you're a, a, an ordinary person out there, you're not going to switch on a dime the second that real wages tick over from negative to positive. You want to see a sustained set of time when inflation is coming down, your take home pay is clearly uh, allowing you to pay for the things that you need at the grocery store and at the pump. And I think what you're starting to see now, now that it's been several months of real wage gains, inflation is starting to recede uh, a bit, is that the sentiment data is ticking up. You see it in the in the consumer board uh, information, you see it in the Michigan uh, sentiment data, you see it in some of the polling data about the president's economic approval. All of that stuff is starting to tick up. And I would be surprised if it doesn't continue to tick up over the next several months as the salience of inflation uh, recedes. Well, I the ticking up, though, of those confidence metrics probably is reliant on the fact that we actually don't get a recession, that the landing is soft. Do you think that's fully assured at this point? Well, I'm hesitant to say that anything is fully assured. Uh, if there's one one thing I learned from my time at the White House is that you have to expect the unexpected. But I would say that all of the data that we have available to us right now about the state of the labor market, about consumer spending, about business investment, uh, all seems to suggest that we are going to have a soft landing. Now, there are things that can disrupt it, as you as you just noted. Some of the disruptions on the shipping side could send inflation uh, moving in the wrong direction. You could have other geopolitical events that could end up uh, pushing us in the wrong direction. But based on the data that we have available to us right now, we're certainly on a path to a soft landing. I know that Secretary Yellen made a similar point just earlier today. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would have a lot of optimism on that front. And if, in fact, we can secure that soft landing, and what we have over the next several months is inflation at or near uh, the target, continued uh, steady job growth. I would be very, very surprised if you don't see uh, consumer sentiment, and economic sentiment go up quite a bit uh, in the months to come. How much does fiscal risk factor, though, into ultimately economic outcomes? Knowing Congress is getting ready to return to Washington next week, there's going to be a big fight over appropriations ahead with the threat of not just to shut down, but potentially a 1% cut across the border sequester come April if they really can't sort this out. How concerned should we be from an economic standpoint? I think from a macroeconomic perspective, we shouldn't be overly concerned. If you look at analyses of past shutdowns, you know, for example, I was working on Capitol Hill back in 2013 when there was a a month-long shutdown, the, the data tends to suggest that that has a pretty limited impact macroeconomically. Now, of course, there is a uh, significant impact on people's lives, on, on millions of federal employees, on people who rely on certain forms of government services who are not going to get those uh, in a shutdown. And if you see some sort of prolonged uh, locked-in reduction in government spending over the long term, that would be a risk. I don't think we're at any uh, risk mm -hmm. of that happening. If we're going to have some sort of one week, two week shutdown as people sort out these issues. I don't think that that's much of a risk from a macroeconomic perspective. 